Ani Bingwa. 702. Weekday mornings. 6 to 9. So unlike the ANC's newfound shock at the extent of the corruption in the public sector, for most people who are keen observers of the news cycle in this country, I think, actually, we've become desensitized to the rot. I mean, of course, nearly a billion rand was stolen from municipalities via VBS Bank. That doesn't shock us. Of course, there was outrage when that bank went under curatorship because it was a black bank. And we don't do that to black banks, no matter what they're accused of. Of course, there hasn't been a single charge against anyone so far. And of course, we don't know if a red cent of that 7.8 million rand that was loaned to the former president has been paid. That sort of thing just doesn't shock us. Not anymore. I mean, what is it? A million there, 10 million there. It's an Oprah giveaway, quite frankly. You get a million, I get a million, she gets a million, he gets a million. So what to make then of the Director General of Treasury, Dondo Mohajane, who says, listen to this, listen carefully, or what would Jacob Zuma say? Listen properly. Between the years... 2013 to last year, the Northwest province was down by 15.3 billion rand in irregular expenditure. Yes, you heard right. That's not the wax in your ears. 15.3 billion rand in irregular expenditure. Of course, let me quickly point out that uh, from an accounting perspective, Uh, terminology or jargon, irregular expenditure doesn't necessarily mean all of it went down the drain. It just means there's a lot we don't know. There's a receipt missing here. Something was unauthorized over there. Uh, Things that just can't quite be explained. So maybe most of it got to the intended recipients and maybe most of it did indeed pay for services. We just don't know. And that's the point, isn't it? But you know, it's not all bad news. We know there was resistance to state capture at the very highest levels of government, certainly. Tlantlanene, as we know, lost his job as a result. So did his deputy, Mtabisi Jonas, who not only lost his job, you'll remember, but refused 600 million rand. Now, I don't know if he was offered his old job back, but he certainly hasn't gone back, has he? But what about the unsung heroines who were nameless who are unknown, the people who could be bullied and silenced and abused, the people who suffered psychological trauma as a result of relentless pressure and sustained attacks on their reputations and their ability to do their jobs. Spare a thought for the two women who testified yesterday at that Nugent inquiry into the revenue service, Sunita Manik and Tsebelezo Seramani, who were both senior executives who were sidelined so that effectively dodgy deals could be struck outside what was previously a highly regulated environment that dealt with corporate tax specifically. I mean, how do you head the unit that once recovered 30% of the total revenue collected by SARS and then find out in a group email announcing your successor that you've been replaced? This after 20 years in the organization. There are many like Manik and Seremani, professional people who studied hard, who qualified, who were diligent in the execution of their duties. Sadly, we're never going to hear about them because many did break, many did fall. Some are now out of work, out of homes, maybe even suffering major depression. Some lost spouses and maybe even their children don't want to see them. And guess what? No one believed them. EWN.